Kevin, it's hard to make a hay of one day move after results. You're also uh, coming into a tough tape for the day. Nonetheless, the rhetoric is that losing Brower is, it hurts. L losing her as COO. Uh, talk to me about what you do when you're short a COO and CFO. You know, well, well, first of all, let me just frame this quarter. We just had another solid quarter of, uh, of recovery. You know, we posted a 5% comp in China. We had a minus 5% comp in the U.S., which is sequential improvement. And we had a beat on earnings per share. Now, relative to Roz, you know, I, I just want to take this opportunity to celebrate her. Roz has been a great partner to me for the last three years, and she's contributed a lot to Starbucks. Now, this has been an aspiration she's had, and, and we celebrate the fact that she's stepping in as the CEO of a publicly traded company at, at Walgreens. And, uh, you know, we're going to support Roz and, and wish her all the best in this new role. Now, what does it mean for Starbucks? You know, certainly, uh, you know, our recovery continues to unfold as we have planned. And, uh, you know, fundamentally, uh, you know, what we're going to do is I'm, gonna, I'm going to flatten the organization a bit. And we've got some very talented senior leaders that have been running uh, our North America business. And, and Ross Ann Williams, she will report directly to me uh, running North America. Brady Brewer, our chief marketing officer, will report direct to me. And so I look at this, you know, the, 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 10, the 10 individuals on our leadership team have uh, 150 years combined uh, Starbucks experience and we've unleashed a growth mindset. So, so we won't miss a beat, but we're gonna celebrate Roz and we're gonna stay focused on executing the recovery strategy that we've outlined for, uh, for our business. Kevin, that's good to hear. Um, the analyst notes I read this morning did seem to express some surprise about the news of Roz's departure. Um, investors feeling a little blindsided maybe. When did you know about her decision? You know, well, certainly we, uh, you know, when we find out about these things, we have an obligation to disclose uh, very quickly. So it was late last week. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we thought, uh, you know, being transparent with shareholders as quickly as we could was the right thing to do. And so we disclosed that yesterday. So, uh, uh, you know, I realize that's always, uh, you know, a surprise when, when, when an executive, uh, you know, transitions. But in this particular case, you know, we celebrate Ross. She's going to be a great CEO, and uh, we've got a deep bench of talent here at Starbucks. And uh, you know, we're going to we're we're going to stay focused on the strategy. The strategy we have in place is working. We've got a deep bench of talent, and uh, we're going to we're going to continue forward, uh, and and we won't miss a beat. So let's go to the same store sales uh, in the U.S. in particular. That was a 5% drop, but it was better uh, than estimates. And uh, China, as you mentioned, did well. Uh, the big question that many analysts had after your results was that how much did the stimulus in January uh, play in, or overall, I guess, the stimulus is helping drive those QSR uh, sales in Starbucks? Yeah, you know, Alex, I, I, you know, I, I don't know how to attribute, you know, how much is to the stimulus, but I, I, here's what I do know is that you know we've now operationalized across all the stores we run around the world where we can we can if the spread of covid is is increasing or accelerating we can dial back some of the experiences like limited indoor seating and and we're able to continue to serve customers through all those channels whether it's drive through whether it's uh, curbside uh, mobile order and pay and and so that is what's sustaining us now you know in many ways i look at uh, you know, I look at the fact that we had a, you know, very, very uh, strong sequential improvement quarter on quarter. And, uh, you know, and that was reflected in our numbers. Kevin, you bring up uh, drive throughs I, I was looking at the numbers for some of your competitors. I guess you could probably call them that. 65% uh, of McDonald's global restaurants have drive through I think you in the United States are about circa 30%. Do you want to get that number higher? If so, to what level? Yeah, first of all, I think the number in the U.S. is actually higher than 30 percent. But the but the answer is that uh, when we when we're driving when we're driving our store development, you know, we're really focused in many ways on uh, new stores that we build that have the cafe and the drive through. And so uh, that that strategy has served us well. And uh, we're going to continue to do that. How many uh, drive through only locations do you foresee coming in the next couple of years, Kevin? You know, Alex, there's not many drive through only. There'll be some, but most of the drive throughs we build also have the cafe where customers can come and, and sit in our store and enjoy their, their beverage and their food in our store. Or if they're on the go and they want to go through the drive through, they'll, they'll go through drive through. So I think we're going to continue to have, you know, far more uh, stores that we build that have the combination of the third place experience plus drive through than we have standalone drive throughs. But we have, we have a small number of just pure drive throughs today. 
Uh, and, and, you know, we might have a bit more going forward, but the, the, the core strategy is this combination of the third place experience plus the drive through. Kevin, just hold that thought for a moment. I just want to bring everybody a piece of news, which I think is germane to what we're seeing today. Robinhood says it's experiencing a service disruption with its web app. This obviously on significant demand. We'll come back to that story in just a moment. In the meantime, let's get back uh, to Kevin uh, and continue the conversation. Kevin, you have a premium price point. Do you feel any pressure to bring that down? You know, it's interesting, Guy. What we've seen is the reason our, our, our ticket is so high is that we're actually seeing customers... Uh, buy more premium beverages. And so, uh, you know, I, I think we, we have not, you know, experienced, you know, any issue with pricing. Uh, you know, we're really focused on creating a great experience for our customers and the beverage platform and the food that we offer. You know, we're seeing uh, more premium beverages, more beverages per order and more food attached. And, uh, and that's, that's really what's lifted tickets so significantly uh, here over the last uh, few quarters. Something we talk about a lot, Kevin, in the markets is the level of recovery and vaccination and then what happens to the corresponding stock market. Um, you are in all the different regions, particularly China, Europe, and the U.S. What do you see? How far behind is Europe and the U.S. in terms of recovery in China, for example? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's different market to market, certainly, and, uh, and it's very dynamic as, as COVID, you know, surges in one market and men, they get it under control. But look, the key that you highlight is vaccinations. And, uh, you know, certainly uh, if you look at the progress we're making in the U.S., uh, you know, I uh, a few weeks ago had reached out to uh, Governor Inslee here in the state of Washington to just, you know, ha have a conversation and share some ideas with him on how uh, he and the Department of Health here in, in the state could accelerate the vaccination program. And, you know, and, and I, I applaud them with what they've done. They've set ambitious goals and they have, uh, you know, just in the last week have increased the capacity for delivering vaccinations by 50% here in the state of Washington. Now, if we do that across the country and certainly you combine that with the federal government securing more vaccines, you know, I get very optimistic about the pace at which we can achieve this here in the United States. And certainly it's different in every country around the world. Right now, you know, certainly Guy would know better than I, in, in London, in, in, in the UK, you know, the, the, the virus is very significant and the spread is significant, but every market is different and it's very dynamic. Yeah, I'm not sure how fully caffeinated we feel over here at the moment, Kevin. <laughs> we could certainly do with uh, a little bit of a boost. Um, but 60%, but circa 60% of your business is the US and China. So let's kind of make the comparisons and continue the comparisons. Um, you've seen a strong recovery, as Alex was alluding to at the beginning, in China. If the pieces fall into place, as you suggest, we may see in the United States, do you think those recoveries will be comparable? Well, you know, I think every market is going to be different, but certainly the U.S. is tracking, just as China did. You know, we had forecasted several quarters ago that China would fully recover by Q1. We're forecasting that uh, our fiscal Q1 and the U.S. would recover by this fiscal two, uh, Q2, and we reinforced that uh, on our call yesterday. And so we're tracking. You know, in fact, uh, you know, we commented that the U.S. Uh, in the month of January is posting about a minus 2% comp, which is another uh, great, great step forward. And, uh, you know, really what we're looking towards, though, if you think about the back half of this calendar year, you know, as this vaccination uh, program rolls out, you know, what we see on the horizon is the great human reconnection. We see as vaccines get more uh, more prevalent across the country and 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 people, you know, start uh, leaving home, you know, where we're no longer working from home or schooling from home to the degree we are today, people are going to look for that place to connect. They're going to look for that place to be part of the community. And Starbucks will be destination number one. And so, uh, you know, I'm very optimistic about that uh, as it relates to Starbucks and the strategy that we're on. And right now we're focused on those experiences that are safe, familiar, and convenient. But we are setting up for this yeah. great human reconnection that's about to unfold. 